A shocker in the Mountain Division as we get set to start this fourth quarter. Wyoming outscores Utah State 17-0 in the third. And they have a 41-17 lead on first place Utah State. Air Force won last night. Boise State is blowing out New Mexico. If everything holds, not only will Wyoming become bowl eligible, but Utah State, Air Force, and Boise will be tied with one game to go. Utah State beat Air Force, but lost to Boise. So tiebreaker scenarios. As Swen reverses field, make you, beg your pardon, that's Valaday, Xavier Valaday. They've been interchangeable at the running back position in this game. 14 yards. Oh, they won. They get each of them about 20 touches per game. Right now, Valaday at 18, Swen at 12. It's fourth quarter. It's going to be a heavy dose of this running attack, and this is the absolute perfect game plan for Wyoming, but I must say that the passing attack has been a pleasant surprise. Let's go out there and do his thing. Over 300 yards on the ground now. And right back to it, Xavier Valade. And that first half, it, it was more about that passing attack, and that's how they got off to a great start in this game. Titus Swen. And that 98-yard touchdown run the last time they had the football, the longest run in Wyoming football history. Well, it's, it's, it's helped set up the run. Early on, they weren't running the ball as effectively. They opened up the passing game, made some big plays, loosened this defense up, and all of a sudden, the run game came to life. And, and, and this, is, this is what you want. Nice balance, something we have not seen from this offense this year. And this is why they were picked by some to win the Mountain Division. They were picked second overall, but had a few first place votes behind only Boise. They got off to that 4-0 start. Lost at Air Force. Lost to Fresno 17-0. Lost to New Mexico 14-3. They had the deep, they, it's been the offensive struggles they, as they try to find their identity, as they try to find out who their quarterback is has plagued them at time with turnovers, but we know that they have a great defense, and it's been on display here in this ball game. Third down and six. Play fake. And Williams on the run, completes it. No, they're going to say incomplete. The catch was made, but out of bounds. So Utah State does get a stop, as Nayor wasn't able to get a toe down. Yeah, just not able to get that left foot. The tap in bounds, and unfortunate because he was open on the sideline to keep this drive going. Utah State. Was to punt it to Jordan Nathan. To the kick, and they run into the kicker. There's a flag out. Nathan spun down. Before he even gets to the 35, it's a 37-yard kick, but it's going to depend on the flag here. It was fourth and six, so running into the kicker would not give you a first down. Well, let's see, you see the off, line judge, yeah. Yeah, offsides on, or full start, excuse me, on Wyoming. So offsetting penalties if they also call running into the kicker. Against the kicking team. Five yards will be added to the end of the kick, first down. Time out on the field. All right, no penalty for running into the kicker. <laughs> Utah State will have it, now 24. Wyoming perplexed. Let me show you who's doing the dirty work in tonight's game, brought to you by Coyote Tractor. And it's the big hog mollies up front. They paved the way for over 300 rushing yards for Wyoming. 98 on this one run from Titus Swen, a Wyoming school record. And it's not just Swen with those 170 rushing yards in this game. Xavier Valade has 20 carries for 132 yards. 324 in all. They're averaging eight and a half yards a carry. Utah State down by 24 as Bonner goes over the middle, incomplete, intended for bowling. Okay. 
And it's been one heck of a night for those two, but I'm glad we gave some love to the big boys up front because without them, you ain't getting 170, 132 yards rushing. And then they've done a great job making guys miss, breaking tackles, showing off some speed down the field. But these holes, I think my gippy old self can fit through <laughs> some of these holes and maybe get a few yards. And the Utah State offense has been grinded to a halt here in this second half by this great Wyoming defense. They get it to Tompkins, get him a touch, but he doesn't get much. Maybe three yards. Well, the big two for Utah State have really been held in check, right? With only a couple catches here in this ball game, has been locked down by Hearn for the majority of it. Tompkins, they're trying to get him more involved. And he's made some big plays. Obviously, the great touchdown on the inside fade, but we said this was the this was the one defense, if anyone felt confident in slowing down this spread you out, up tempo, all the speed and all the talent. This was the defense in the Mountain West that could match up with them. And, and they're proving it. They've proved it all game. Numbers on third down. Not great for Utah State. Three for 11. He goes short pass, and they're able to convert it. Eric Wright, again, has been quiet tonight. Well, they moved him to the other side. He's had a tough time going against her, and they put him against Colden. Number 21, great job and patience at the line of scrimmage to win on the slam. It was only down seven at the half, and they had the ball driving for a potential game-tying score, and then a bad snap on a field goal has sent this game Wyoming's way as Garrett Crawl finally gets Bonner out of bounds. The ankle may be feeling a little bit better. I don't know, maybe it's just numb by now in the cold. Yeah, I think it's just numb. He still seems to be hobbling a little bit, a little bit better than he did coming out of halftime. Moving it around a little bit, get some blood flow. A couple of nice runs here in the second half. 46 rushing yards in this game. Running quarterback. And just 26 total rushing yards coming into this game. First and 10 to the air again. And again, it's batted down at the line. Cole Goodbow. It's the third time they batted it down at the line of scrimmage. That's second time for Goodbow. He's got those bear claws up there. Still the line of scrimmage. Short route, able to get that left hand up there to deflect it. But maybe the, the ankle a little bit, movement in the pocket, finding those open holes, delivered some of these shorter passes. Rolling the pocket left, and he's going to go long, and oh boy, that was dangerous. Azizi Hearn had the best play on it. The cornerback for Wyoming. Third down and 10. Well, you have to understand some of these situations like that, these corners are going to, they're going to give up the shorter route. And, and, and to the field, throwing a corner ball is risky, risky business. Got lucky that ball was too high for anyone to catch. They converted their last third and long. They'll set up the screen pass, and that doesn't work. Elion Noah. I don't know if he wasn't ready for it or what. Grabbed his helmet after he saw that one go by him. Yeah, and you got to stay on the field and, and give your team an opportunity here and go for it. You've crossed the 50-yard line. They go single up. I like right on the back side, number eight, one-on-one -on -one with Colden. See if you can hit matched up. If they go more of a shell coverage, you obviously got to go to 13 in the slot. Wyoming only sends four. On fourth down and 10, Bonner throws it back shoulder, not even close. And Wyoming is going to take over on downs. Up 41 to 17, with 10 and a half to go here in the fourth. Now on fourth and 10, another misfire from Bonner. Revisiting our keys to the game brought to you by Acura. 
Wyoming doing a great job getting a third and somewhat manageable. They've limited the explosive plays, which have been huge. Should have been that for Utah State defensively. They need to limit the explosive plays because they did not get that done on that side of the football. They did go up to a fast start, but you know, it's been kind of the reversal for this Utah team. Start slow, then come out fast in the second half. That's it for Utah State. And almost made a play in the backfield, but Swen able to pick up a yard. Utah State fell behind 7-0. They responded with a touchdown to tie things up, thought they might get things rolling, and then boom, you give up a 98-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Well, they make plays, and all of a sudden, Wyoming was always ready to respond offensively, whether it was in the run game, in the pass game, teams, all three phases for Wyoming most complete performance of the year, especially at Mountain West play. I mean, one in five in Mountain West play heading into tonight, just have not gotten it done. Got off to that 0-4 start. Swen makes another man miss in the backfield, goes down. They beat Colorado State 31-17, and then played really well last week at Boise. Wyoming had a chance to win that game. They were only down six points midway through the fourth, had the ball near midfield went against them and they ended up losing that game. This week, they were really, really intrigued by this matchup. And Greg Bull said, watch these guys and make them do things that they haven't been comfortable with. Boy, have they ever tonight. Levi Williams putting it in the air. 50-50 ball again, and it is brought down again. Isaiah Nayor. And these are not easy catches. He is, he is a, a highlight reel tonight. One on one, he's got the length, he's got the downfield speed, the ability to step on the corners, and then tracking this football and making that catch. I gotta say, wow. Four catches, 125 yards now on that 40 yard touchdown with more on Nayor. Set it down to Amanda on this Wyoming offense who's having a breakout season. It is Isaiah Nayor. He went to Florida this offseason uh, to train, was catching 100 to 200 balls per day. He really fell in love with studying the game, and we're seeing that pay off. No question about it. I just, right now, when you watch him tonight, the only thing that he's done wrong is, you know, a little bit too much trash talking after one of his beautiful catches he had in the third quarter, but the speed has been on display, the route running, and then just that, that last catch, he's had a couple of those where I don't know how he's tracking this football over the wrong shoulder, Willie May style. Sweet. Where they're going too, that's the thing. Right, exactly, and that's the thing. I mean, it, 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 but it's been the, the, the running game that's allowed him to get these one-on-ones. You gotta fill the box, and they still can't stop him on the ground. Second and 15, Xavier Valaday. It's within a couple yards of a first down. Well, this running game, and let's watch the left side of the offensive line just do their job, get to the second level. I mean, he doesn't get touched to 15 yards, 10, 15 yards down the field. But going back to the, the, the receivers a little bit, you know, big question mark with, with Eberhurt, Hart, Eberhurt Hurt, excuse me, who is going to be, you know, the Robin? to Nayor, and, and Cobbs really has stepped up in this football game as well. Six catches, 76 yards, and a touchdown to also take some pressure off all the attention that Nayor gets. And uh, talking with defensive coordinator Ephraim Bonda of Utah State, he said, for us, there's two keys. It's stopping the run, five. And they have not done either one of them tonight. 331 rushing yards for Wyoming. And Nayor has 125 receiving yards. And on fourth down and two, be a field goal attempt for Wyoming. 34 yard attempt. John Hoyland. It is quiet in here. Much of the stunned crowd headed for the exits several minutes ago as the lead swells again. 
44-17. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network, presented by GEICO. Tonight's player of the game brought to you by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. And it's Titus Swin. 43-yard touchdown run. And then he doubled it up with a 98-yarder earlier in the second half. 15 carries, 169 yards, and those two touchdowns. Speed, power, vision, great offensive line. Recipe for success in the running game. It's always nice to get a school record on a nice cold November Saturday night. And a rivalry game as well. Wyoming has lost two straight in this series. They didn't play last year because of uh, postponement due to COVID. Two years ago, it was Jordan Love throwing a couple of touchdowns for Utah State in a victory. The last Wyoming win was four years ago on this field. Josh Allen let it come from behind victory. Logan about 400 miles straight west of Laramie down I-80. It's going to be a uh, happy plane ride back over the Rocky Mountains for these Wyoming Cowboys who are going to get to bowl eligibility with their sixth win. They've got Hawaii coming up next week to close out the regular season. And for Utah State, everything's still out there. The offense has sputtered here in the second half big time, but they have an opportunity still to win this division. It's going to be a three-way tie with one game to go. As Bonner goes deep for Tompkins. And it's incomplete with a couple of penalty flags coming out. Utah State has a game at New Mexico on Friday. And they would likely need a Boise loss. The Boise play San Diego State. Number 42, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic. Well, this has been the matchup they've wanted to hit in this game and just have not gone to it. Clearly pass interference, and it's tough. When you get behind a receiver like that with that kind of speed, you're just trying to prevent him from getting a nice 70-yard touchdown. Handed off on first and 10. Oh, Tyler Jr. He's over 100 yards as well. Tompkins had that long touchdown catch, but he's not even halfway to his season average this season. This was the great catch in the first half. That's really the only success he has had. Yeah, just that, that player there open, but it was an all-out blitz and had the opportunity. We're we'll talking about a receiver heading into this game, six straight 100-yard games, and you know, they've done a great job bottling him up while he's on the outside in the slot. As uh, five catches for 67 yards does Tompkins. 10 times. It's 144 yards receiving per game. Number one receiver in the country. But Wyoming's done a fantastic job tonight. Bonner completes it to midfield. It's Kyle Van Leeuwen, his first catch. Tompkins came back. This is his super senior night. Transferring in the offseason with the new coaching staff coming in, Blake Anderson able to convince him and many others to stay. Magical season it's been for the result tonight. They've already exceeded every expectation. Even a glass half full Utah State Aggie fanatic could have going into this season. Bonner hit hard again. Isaac White. Someone needs to put a couple packets of a leaf on his chair in his locker. And he's going to sleep good tonight. I feel you, man. I've had those games. It is Time just one of those days where you're just getting banged up. Everything's a little bit achy. It's cold. But he's continued to battle and battle, making plays with his legs, too. It's been great to see what his heart's like out there for his teammates. But you know, being down 44-17, this game for Utah State. Warming up. 
He's come in a, a few times for Bond when he's gone out due to injury. Played a lot in that Air Force win. Led them to a victory in that game. Threw for three touchdowns. With Bonner. Uh, got off to a really good start. Threw a couple of touchdowns in the first half. You mentioned the six carries, 46 yards, but he's been under pressure all game. He's taken a bunch of big hits. A ton of hits up this game. Falling down awkwardly a few times. This defensive line, I said earlier, the game of football is won the line of scrimmage. We've seen what Wyoming has done running the football on the offensive line, but their defensive line's ability to get after Bonner, make him uncomfortable, make him get rid of the ball faster than he wants to. And obviously he's been limping for the majority of this football game as well. Latest hit from Victor Jones, the defensive end for Wyoming. And here comes Peasley, who is uh, more of a running threat Got some speed. They like him, but doesn't have the grasp of the offense that, that Bonner has. And we're waiting for Utah State to, to make that comeback again, as they've done all season long. Six double-digit comebacks. It just never came tonight. Less to do with Utah State, more to do with Wyoming just putting together their best game maybe in a couple of years. Yeah. Especially on the offensive side of the football, probably one of the better games I've seen them play here, like you said, in the past two or three years. And, you know, that, this should give them confidence. I know the goal was, hey, let's just get to that sixth win to make sure that we're bowl eligible. But that doesn't mean you're always going to make a bowl game. But if you can take this over until next week, there's no reason why this should not be a 7-5 football team here at the end of the season. If you're 7-5, you're definitely going bowling. You just got to bottle this up. Offen def defensively, they've been like this all year. Defense just needs to keep doing their thing. Offense, they are the running backs, the offensive line. You know, with how well Williams played throwing the football, bottle this up, enjoy it. But let's see if you can do a repeat next week and then in your bowl game as well. Special teams as well. That 98-yard kickoff return. Peasley under pressure on fourth down and two. Spins out of it and throws it down the sideline. It's intercepted. Isaac White with his first pick of the season. Isaac White has been the one, been battling back and forth with Tompkins for the majority of the day, making a big INT, staying alive, staying alive. Coming up next on CBS Sports Network, we're going to take you to the studio for the latest college football headlines as our team of experts highlight all the action from around the nation today inside college football on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. And there's a lot to talk about tonight. Going to be a huge shakeup in the playoff rankings. Oregon goes down in this state of Utah, down in Salt Lake City. They get blown out. Of course, Ohio State blows out Michigan State. Alabama gets taken to the limit by Arkansas. See how high Ohio State might climb in the rankings. And Cincinnati should be in playoff position as well. Stick around. Inside college football coming up when we're done here. Under four minutes to go in Wyoming, putting the finishing touches on an incredible performance here as an underdog. Last place against first place in the Mountain Division. Yeah, what a crazy game. I'm interested to see you brought up a good point. Ohio State, the way they've looked, a lot of people believe they are the number two team in the country, been just kind of obviously sitting behind Oregon because of the loss early this season, but the way Alabama has looked, their loss, then half go to A&M. It'll be interesting to see if they do bump up Ohio State tonight. I mean, Ohio State could have won today 100 to nothing against the top 10 team. Another handoff to DeWyan McNeely. Even he's getting some yards out there behind this great offensive line at the three-minute mark. 
Take a look at the college football playoff top 10 and the results this week. Alabama survives Arkansas. Oregon gets blown out. Uh, boy, Michigan, Ohio State next week. Michigan, just that one loss to, to Michigan State. And don't count out Oklahoma State and Oklahoma just yet. Yeah, Oklahoma State won. Cincinnati has to feel pretty good right now. A lot of people in front of them losing, have a chance to lose, obviously, with Alabama versus Georgia in a couple weeks in Atlanta in the SEC Championship game. I just want to see Cincinnati in. Just just give them a chance, man. They, they, they've proven that they deserve a seat at the table. Can they beat Georgia if they're the four seed? They're probably not, but that doesn't mean that they don't deserve a chance to because there's a lot of teams out there that if they're the four seed probably would not beat my dogs. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> well, they uh, after a really tough uh, five-week stretch or so where they looked uh, bad against bad opponents and eked out victories in the American Conference, they had one of their best games of the season today against SMU and uh, boy, that American Conference Championship game between Cincinnati and Houston is going to be great. Oh, yeah. Houston with just one loss on the season. And again, Utah State, even though they get blown out tonight, still very much in the running for the Mountain Division Championship. It's going to be a three-way tie with one game to go. Everybody playing on Friday this upcoming week. If Utah State at New Mexico have an opportunity. Boise State plays San Diego State. And if San Diego State can win that game and Utah State beats New Mexico, Utah State would be in, regardless of what Air Force does, because they've got the tiebreaker over Air Force in head-to-head. -head. They don't against Boise. We talked about the wild season. Look at this season for Utah State. 5-0 and on the road, and now 3-3 three and -three at home. As they fall to 5-2, and two, Boise State is winning handily right now at New Mexico. And Wyoming is going to move up there and get their second win in the last three games after that 0-4 start in conference play. Now the West, because the Air Force, very talented football team. I've had a chance to cover them this year as well, and, yep. and they are a lot of fun to watch on both sides of the football. And that'll do it. Wyoming comes into Logan and blows out Blake Anderson and the Utah State Aggies. Anderson telling his team to get back. Some John with Wyoming players. Seen some of this throughout the evening. Again, it is a rivalry game. These guys don't really like each other. They've been playing since 1903. Credit to those students for sticking it out in the 35 degree weather tonight. Utah State never led in this game, but they were in it early in the third quarter, only down by seven at the break, and a great drive to open up the second half, but it was a drive that derailed due to a bad snap on a field goal attempt. Wyoming took it down and scored and never looked back. Amanda Guerra with our player of the game tonight. Hey guys, yeah, we are here with Titus Wynn, who just found out, by the way, that he had the longest run in school history, 98 yards, two touchdowns. What do you make of your own performance tonight? It was, it was, I don't even, I'm just excited. I feel like it was way overdue. My linemen been coming day in, day out, working, they bust off. Everybody's been working. My, even the other back, running backs been working. We've been helping each other out, and that's how we made it happen today. I talked to Coach Bull at halftime. He said this was the best performance that he has seen from Levi Williams all season. What do you make of your quarterback's performance? Hey, that's my quarterback. That's, that's all I can say. That's my quarterback. <laughs> you guys had a, a great start to the season, went 4-0, then you had a tough stretch there. How much does this win and the way you guys won mean to your team tonight? Oh, it means so much to come out here in Utah and beat a team like this. I mean... I don't think nobody ever thought we was going to win this game, but look at us now. Zero's end of the game, 44-17, Wyoming ball. Titus, thank you so much. We'll thank let you, you celebrate with your team. Thank Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Wyoming Amanda. ball, baby. Let's go. Yeah, we heard that uh, he was a, a quiet guy. Well, not quiet after this performance tonight, 44-17.
Wyoming the win. For Aaron Murray, Amanda Guerra, and our entire crew, I'm Chris Hassel. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. It's going to be a three-way tie atop the Mountain Division with one game to go. Send it back to our New York studios, guys.